tell me about some of the marches that you've had here in Cape Town. What kind of response have you had from the public? Um, the the main the main feeling that comes across uh, when we joined up with some of the the other local groups was firstly uh, it's always a surprise why is there someone with a mask here and then somebody else would maybe perhaps recognize the mask and once they do or maybe somebody's unsure they would come and talk to me and speak to me and once I tell them well, who we are and and what we're about it's like a sense of uh, kinship that they feel. And one thing that I've noticed personally, um, speaking to various people on the on the ground, is that most people have this unease or this unhappiness with the state of affairs, with the way things are going currently, but they feel somehow that they can't do anything about it because they're just the ordinary citizen and they don't have the power to get it across. But when they see that there are others like them, yes, we're donning a mask, but there's others just like them that's actually going out there and making a difference. It kind of gives them that sense of empowerment. So when I have met up with some of um, the other political activists, for example, the Free Palestine March, that was a very big one, and the March against Monsanto and no GMOs, it was very, very friendly, very, very inclusive. We, I feel that we are very much welcomed amongst um, most or all, 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 all um, activist groups that I've worked with. Yeah. yeah. Now, I would say that you're probably the only activist group, well, not the only one, but one of the only ones we see on the streets here that hide their identity. Why, why wear the mask? Well, um, it's always been the, the question, you know, people discredit us because of the fact that we wear a mask. They say, oh, no, they're, they're not really activists because they hide behind their mask. It's not really about that. In the early, early days it was, because the Church of Scientology had a massive lawyer team and they would often... Um, um, personal attacks. Personal attacks on, on members mm. that attended mm. marches and what, what have you. Um, today, however, it's become much more than that. It's, uh, it's a form of identity. Um, because we contradict um, everything an organization should be, we're loose, we welcome, anyone can call themselves a, members, a member, um, we use the mask as our, our fundamental foundation of who we are. Flag. Um, it's our flag, it's our name, it's our symbol, it's how we identify each other. And, and also, may I jump in? Also, um, recently at the, the Free Palestine March, I was actually approached by one of the uh, leaders who wasn't really um, aware of Anonymous. So he came to speak to me, um, a slightly aggressive uh, tone, says, why, why are you covering your face? You need, to, you need to show them who you are and that you're not you're not ashamed to, to show your face or to be part of this. So I explained to him then and there that the reason why I, I came here wearing the mask is, is not, or, or the reason why I'm here was not to, to, to stand um, facing the streets, facing the media with my face as my own personal identity, one single entity. The reason why I'm wearing the mask is to represent a, a, a large, a, a, a greater whole, like, we much larger, much larger group of, of people. We have networks all over the world and we're we always communicating. So if there are a few members uh, physically present, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's everyone that's involved. We've got a lot of people behind the scenes as well, but most importantly with regards to the mask itself, it, it, it basically, it, 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 it's in line with, with South Africa's rainbow, rainbow nation idea that um, Everybody is welcome, everybody is included, anyone can join us at any time. We have people that are professionals, we have people that are retired, we have people that are, we have students, we have people from every walk of life, every color, every creed, and every religion as well. And it's very, it's, it's inclusive in that manner because it doesn't discriminate. When we put the mask on, we're all the same. We're all the same, we're anonymous, and we, we all believe in making that difference, and it's as simple as that. It's not about who I am or what I've been through or what I think um, on, on, on my own as a, as a single entity. It's the fact that I identify with others like me who were possibly in similar positions um, in their mindset with regards to wanting to make that change. When you talk about making a change, what does Anonymous hope to achieve? We don't have a set, um, set of goals. Mm -hmm. um, to answer your question, rather look at what we have done. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. There are countless, I mean, there are countless stories in the past, even in the past two years um, of things we've done. For example, the um, college kids who raped a young girl um, but got away with it because one of their fathers was a high-ranking police officer. Anonymous got him, got all of them convicted and they did jail time, serious jail time if they're not in jail presently. Um, Russia today got called a, a terrorist by one of the um, senators in America. And he, they were a terrorist organization, sorry. They were con compared to ISIS and Boko Haram. Um, Anonymous offered Russia today their assistance and said, do you want us to do something about this? And Russia today said no. Um, what else, for example? There's, there's, re there's so many I mean, examples. Not, not even um, just uh, globally. Um, the scope is, is uh, it's, it's, it's global as well, but I mean right here in South Africa, as, as, uh, in Cape Town uh, alone, we, we are feeding the homeless, we are doing clothing drives, we are um, cleaning up the environment. It's, the, the scope is so broad, it's, it's anything that we feel will add to, how can I say, the... Um, Spreading the love. Yeah, spreading mm -hmm. the love, you know? It's, it's, the, it's everybody that joins Anonymous has something on the chest that they want to achieve. And when they come to us with this, with this, with this goal or this idea or op operation, as we call it, then people it, within Anonymous who feel that this is something that they would like to get involved in, they would join it and go in that direction. Essentially, Every anon, the common denominator yeah. is they realize something's wrong with the world. Um, in most cases, they might not be able to identify what exactly it is, but they, they feel they have to or they feel obligated yeah, to do, do something, something about that. Mm -hmm. And anon anonymous is the family or, the f or, or forum for them to do that. Now, yeah. I, I want to just jump back a little bit. You spoke about the situation where um, the young girl was raped and the, um, the perpetrators didn't face jail time because the father was a high-ranking police officer. In a situation like that, how how did Anonymous um, get the <laughs> conviction? What did you do? Uh, well, there's many, many things we can do. Firstly, in, that, in a situation like that, not that situation specifically, we could hack a computer mm -hmm. to gather information that would otherwise not be available to law enforcement agencies. Um, some members affiliated with Anonymous in the past would go so far as to... Uh, quite simply order $250,000 worth of construction equipment to the property and the property owner has to pay for it. He can't say I didn't order this. But so there's countless different diverse ways that we can, mm -hmm. you know, spread awareness and, and force, force a case open for everyone to see what exactly is going on. Isn't that illegal though? Yes. <laughs> but I guess it's, it's for a good cause. How do you justify that? Civil disobedience. It's illegal yeah. to wear a mask at a protest. We do. Yeah. It's, illi it's illegal to carry, I mean, you just have to start talking about gun rights in America. So many things are illegal which shouldn't be illegal. Um, I'm not saying that it should be legalized that you can order $250,000 worth of construction equipment. That would be bad. But because uh, governments, law enforcement is giving us, is giving population so few options um, we're having to resort to these things. You just have to look at the Egyptian, uh, uh, the, the Arab Spring. Well, they cut off the internet, so we had to hack it to open it. We had to do illegal stuff so people could get their voices heard. It's, yeah, it's the same with, with regards to um, Nelson Mandela. I think that's the one closer to home. It's that, with, with really? for, yeah, his story as well, he couldn't, he didn't um, operate within the bounds of the law to achieve what he did. He had to push that boundary mm -hmm. and he had to open discussion that he had to change the way we looked at certain things. You can't approach, you can't solve a problem by doing things the way that it's always been done. Nelson Mandela was on the US terrorist watch list until he was 92. And only after yeah. he was recognized as a revolutionary. He won the Nobel Peace Prize before being removed from the US terrorist watch list, if that answers your question. Well, I want to talk about your mantra. Um, it, it says, we are anonymous, we are